how concerning is this? It looks pretty pretty worrying. And, the, and the, we all recall the phrase axis of evil when that was used in relation to uh, Iran and Iraq. And now it's going to be back in circulation again, maybe for good reason. Well, I completely agree with you. This is an axis of evil. Uh, like wherever they come, uh, wherever they intervene, be it Ukraine or be it Middle East, they're uh, always on the side of the bad guys, so to say. I think uh, the the, the re real reason why Russia uh, is behaving like this now, it's um, they really the, the regime really feels itself uh, marginalized. And they really feel that they are, you know, part, they are in opposition to the mainstream, world mainstream, you know, uh, democracy, liberalism, uh, Western world, uh, human rights, all these things. They are just like, they are so much against it so that they just basically feel that they, uh, they, they need to support struggle against all those things uh, wherever it happens mm. uh like till the last moment uh putin um, was balancing very carefully between israel and iran say uh till recently for many years he was like very careful observing the interests of russia neither falling to to to, to any and, and and without falling down to any side but now he like completely is one-sided. He yes. he just stopped stopped trying um, stopped trying to play the middle uh, the middle like you know game. Yes. Um, uh, so I I think it's uh, there. It, it's like partly it's rational because uh, like it, it really so much needs uh, support of Tehran in terms of arms delivery yes. because of the war in Ukraine. So he ha he cannot afford being in the middle ground where it's important for Tehran in the Middle East. No. But on the other side, it's not just purely rational and logical. The Russian regime, you should understand, it's becoming very um, emotional. Yes. So emotionally, they feel that like Hamas is like one of our own. They are the good guys because they're against the, main, the world mainstream, which is America, Israel, West in general. So it's something like this. Just feeling a curious sort of, I don't know, twisted kinship then. I mean, th these countries, Russia, Iran, North Korea, don't have a, a lot in common apart from having despotic rulers. What will Sergei Lavrov, the Russian foreign minister, want to achieve in these meetings with North Korea and with Iran? Look, definitely there is uh, this arms delivery, uh, maybe trying to get around sanctions, maybe together they can do something about oil trade. I don't I'm not sure about those things, but what I'm sure about it's a, a very important part of this uh, of this thing is uh, Russian public opinion. Like uh, they really do care about what Russians think about uh, this marginalization of the country. They um, they understand that in in terms of uh, Russian public, this war, uh, this um, uh, you know sanctions and uh, the feeling that the country is being alone against the whole world it really depresses uh, the base of support of putin putin putin's um putin's base of support and they so they really need to break this feeling to show that no we are not alone we are not being marginalized we have a lot of allies look, yeah look here here is iran here is china here is north korea so from this point here is hamas so from this point of view it's uh, not so much important so that each of these uh, uh players are you know, like of high quality, because what kind of a lie is North Korea? It's, no. it's a marginal thing. But uh, it, it doesn't matter. Just there should be the chain of events, yeah. uh, chain of visits, chain of communication. So just to show that when the West is trying uh, to uh, limit us, uh, to, to break our uh, connections to the outside world, it fails. That's why they're organizing the summits between, um, between Russia and African countries inviting them to come to Moscow. Yeah. Uh, trying just, just trying, to, trying to make friends and influence people. And we're talking here about a, a club of outcasts, although rather dangerous outcasts.